Okay, you guys are ready to go. Okay, welcome to the Great Southern Billiard Tour. We're going to watch a match between uh, Sam Monday and Brian White. And I got uh, Dave King here in the booth with me. I'm World Alvin, and we're going to have Shannon Dalton here soon to commentate with you, Dave. That'll be great. Great. Uh, I don't believe me and uh, Shannon have ever done a match together yet. Yeah, this will be a great uh, match here. This should be a phenomenal match right now. You have two uh, heavy hitters, uh, probably two of the heaviest hitters in the uh, tournament right now playing. Absolutely. Uh, Brian White from uh, Spartanville, South Carolina. Excellent player, well-accomplished player. Uh, Sam Monday from uh, Mount Airy, North Carolina. I'm uh, currently on the road with Sam Monday right now. Uh, and, uh, doing quite well in the local tournament scene. Uh, had a lot of success together. I'd like to wish both these players the best of luck and Absolutely. We'll have a great match here. Brian White has won the lag and we'll have the opening break. He's got Pinky back out again. Got His, the pink uh, break cue. Famous break cue that he uses. So we're at Speakeasy's Billiards. Sanford, North Carolina. Interesting room. Very interesting room. Brian's made the one ball in the top corner pocket and uh, actually has a nice shot on the two. Uh, I look for him to go ahead and clear these balls out. Oh, you're going to give him the game already? It's pretty much automatic. Uh, give him players the game. Of, these of this caliber here. Inside pull, give him the game. Trick. It's jacked up a little bit over the nine. But shouldn't be much of a problem for Brian White. Mm -hmm. Bobbled that a little bit. It still uh, still fell. Now speaking of this uh, pool room, uh, right? This is a uh, a very unique place. Uh, there's a lot of collectors' items that uh, the owner uh, Jimmy Bullis has collected over the years. Uh, actually, has a uh, 
NASCAR that was a backup car in the Daytona 500 where Dale Earnhardt was killed. Really? It's a car from the movie The Godfather that Sonny was shot in in the tollway. Yeah, James Conn. The car actually uh, sits right in the very back of the pool room in a glass showcase. So those of you all that are in the uh, Raleigh, Durham, uh, Sanford area, uh, stop through and uh, check out uh, Speakeasy Billiards. Uh, get a nice tour. And that, even if you don't play pool, it's uh, definitely worth uh, stopping in just to check out the nice uh, set of collectibles that uh, Jimmy Bullis has collected over the years. Quite a set, too. Quite a set. It's one got a good field here, Alvin. Uh, a lot of the top uh, players in the uh, southeastern states here. A lot of great players here. A couple from Ohio as well. Yep. Yourself, Alex, even though now you're living in uh, Raleigh, aren't you? Uh, yeah. Playing out of brass tap? Uh, for the most part, yes. Uh, Sam's going to play a little uh, thin safe here. I'm going to keep all back down on the table. Man, that's a great shot. He's snooking nice him behind safety. the eight ball. Mm. Let's see what Brian elects to do here. He might try to kick the end rail and kick the four ball back down table, parking the cue ball right there. He's taking a really good look at it. He, possible you might be able to thin this ball and put the cue ball back down where it is now. Going two, maybe three rails back down table. And in my personal opinion, this is the match of the tournament. Uh, it's a great match. And he elected to shoot the shot, uh, trying to kick the four ball back down table. He's uh, unsuccessful in that attempt. Uh, Sam is going to be uh, fairly straight in on the four ball. And I stand corrected in giving Brian the first game. Yep, gave him the game too early. And Sam has been playing great lately. Uh, We've been at three events in the past three weeks. And he has a first, a third, and a fifth, sixth. Also a third place finish in an Ozone Tour event. Draw straight back down the table. The seven ball. It's a nice shot there. Well, just roll up a little bit, play the eight ball in the side pocket. I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to give him the game. Sam likes to shoot the balls with authority. He, you're not going to see a lot of roll in his game. Well, that can be good and bad. Just depends on what, what the weak spot is. Does he get too excited or, you know, what's this? And game one's going to go to Sam Monday. And he will have the break. I'll get you set up. And coming in the booth with me here uh, momentarily is going to be Shannon Dalton, the uh, director of this tournament, the founder of this tournament, and a personal friend of mine. And of course, Sam had to bump the light a little bit. <laughs> All right, joining me in the booth right now is Shannon the Cannon Dalton. All righty, well, just sit down. I think the score is one to nothing, Sam. It's good to have Glad you in the booth, Shannon. Glad to be here. Final stop of the year. It's been a long year. It's been a great one, though, hasn't it? 
Been a good one, 35 events, been real busy. Looks like Sam's come up a little bit dry on the break. Uh, Brian actually has a pretty nice shot on the one here. Uh, four ball's gonna give him a little bit of trouble. Four ball's the key shot. He shot that a little tentative. Uh, well, he had to hold the cue ball also. But no, he didn't hit it with a good aggressive stroke. You're right. Well, he has snookered Sam uh, behind the six and four. Pretty unlucky draw for these two great players to be drawing each other You know, this early in the match. I think there's only four double A's in the whole event. And these two, these two fell right in there on top of each other. Well, that was a fabulous shot. Yes, it was. He uh, was able to mass save the ball right around. And then come out two rails for position. That's hitting about as good as it can be hit there. Now key shots are uh, going to be coming up here, uh, how uh, Sam likes to uh, deal with this four ball. It's a nice shot there, actually bumping the three down along with the four. Tell you what, Sam's played good all year long. Yes, he's he probably has. He's got the best stats of anybody on the tour all year. Yeah, I've been on the road with him for about the past uh, three or four weeks now, and uh, we've really had a lot of success. Uh, well, it's a great save by uh, Sam Monday there. Just a real solid player, but he's playing a real solid player also. Yes, he is. This will be a great match here. You guys are in for a sweater's delight. Wow, what a great shot that was. Actually uh, came two rails and thinned the three ball, putting it down to the bottom rail. Uh, I think he was actually trying to sweep it over in the corner, and if he missed it, you know, the cue ball goes up table, but you, he still hit it on the correct side. Well, that's the difference between a lot of the uh, – you know, lower ranked players and higher ranked players. I mean, it's just like in golf. When you miss a putt, uh, missing it on the pro side, missing it on the amateur side. That's so true. What do you like here, Shannon? I think Sam may bank the, the three all behind all of those balls. He lost the cue ball, but that's what he was going to do. He was trying to put the three right in behind those balls. But I think he wanted to hold the cue ball down there on this bottom corner, and he let the cue ball get away from him a little bit. I'll tell you, I think he's actually come up pretty good here. Uh, does Brian have the shot to shoot the three? Left to save. No, I think he'll thin the three into the six and come back out two rails. Just like that. Executed perfectly. Only if you like perfect, right? I don't know if Sam can hit to three. If he can hit to three, he's got to shoot at it. And if you do, so by shooting at it, you know, you go into the six and could run out from here if the three goes. It's hard for me to tell from this angle. I don't believe the, he can hit the three uh, from here. I believe he is hooked. And this is where uh, you want to try to kick safe here. Good hit. And got back to the table. That's what he was really was trying to do. Didn't want to kick it hard and open the balls wide open no, there. No, not at all. Not in that situation. I think Brian's going to do the same thing again, just thin it and come out two rails again. Or might just go behind the four. Yeah. Just behind the four. Now, if he has froze this ball, it's going to. It's a whole different shot. If it's froze, he's got to shoot at it hard. Say neither one of these guys will give up without a fight. I, I will promise you all that. Now they're two experienced veterans. It must not have been froze for this by the way he shot at it. Oh, he kicked in between them. That's rough to do there. I don't think you yeah. could do that again if you tried. He was kicking to the high side of the three. Maybe trying to double kiss it and leave it right there and Brian may have to play safe with the ball in hand here. If he does, he'll just put the three down table and leave the cue ball right behind the six. That's a smart shot. There's, this early in the match, there's no need to try to pocket the three, jacking up. And... He's looking no. at making it now, but this is a tough, tedious little shot here. You may get called over to watch this hit, actually, Shannon. He's playing safe. I think. Yeah, he's just.
Nice shot at it. Great shot. From the angle we're at here, it's a little bit tough to tell, like I said. You know, that table is uh, a little more snug than the rest of the tables uh, that are being, the tournament's being played on. Yeah, it's a... It's a double shim, uh, gold crown. Uh, the rest of them are just single shims. Good playing table. Good, very good playing good table. Good shim table. I mean, it got, you know, not to be gaffy either. I mean, you know, it plays, it plays true. Not a lot of tables, if, if the shims are not correct in them, uh, they can play real phony. Exactly. I think you've experienced a table like that in the pool room you used to have at one point mm -hmm. in time. <laughs> I'm not sure what size those pockets were, but it, I know it was. <laughs> they were small. <laughs> yes, they were. <laughs> and they were gaffy. That was a gold crown, too. And I actually uh, spoke to Mark Mazden about five months ago, and he still has that table. He may have, yeah. It's been put up, has not been put back together since he uh, picked it up from your pool room some 10 years ago. Yeah. I think Brian is just going to try. Just roll it Again, in. Again, the angle's got me a little bit. I would think he would want to cut it in the side and go to to the bottom rail and back up. But now he's looking like he's going to shoot it in the corner. It's one of those kind of fell on the 50 yard line, but myself, I like shooting it in the side. He's going for the corner, Shannon. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I like that or not. What I like shoot about shooting it in the side, if you make it in the side, you've got automatic, automatic position. position. Automatic. Now, if he, if he punches it in this corner down here, then he'll still have position, but got to be careful. These early games like this are very critical. A lot of people's kind of a little bit careless in the early parts of a match, and believe it or not, I mean. It will you, cost you. Well, it'll cost you dearly. If the match goes 10-10 or, you know, something like that, those early games, uh, the what ifs and what if nots. That's a great shot there you just played. Makes a big difference at the end. Yeah, you hit that ball great. those of you out there that don't know Brian very well, he, he's a very well accomplished player. Uh, plays good one pocket, good nine ball, good ten ball. Not too sure if he plays uh, any bank pool. Uh, Brian plays a little bank pool. I mean, you know, it's just not that popular of a game in this part of the country. Right, where I'm from, where yeah. you're from, you know, it's uh, a game that it's played you see quite played often. every day like eight ball here. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Made a nice little out here. Very nice. Well, both of these guys are aware of how important this match is. Yeah, neither one of them want to go to the one loss side. Neither, this early. Not this early, especially. And also, by winning the match, you get rid of one of the better players in the event. Or, you know, put at least, at least wound him, put him on the one loss side. Make him work twice as hard the rest of the tournament. Are we all tied up, sports fans? 1-1. One, one. So you're looking forward to Louisville, or I, sh I should say uh, Indiana, Shannon? Oh, yeah. Tickle to death. Look forward to it every year. Greg Sullivan and them, boy, they do a great job up here at the Derby I'll every year. I'll tell you year. what, they, they did every year that I was at the one in at the Executive West. I've not been to the new place yet. Uh, I took that sort of eight-year break from pool, and now that I'm back into it, uh, I can't wait to go. Nice break there by Brian. Let's see if he comes up with a shot. All depends if the two goes by the seven, and it does. I would think there, I don't see a lot of problems here. This is pretty rel nice, relative, simple out here. Just don't be, don't be careless and miss this two ball. No, if there's any doubt in his mind, he'll play the two seven combination. If there's any doubt. The two goes. Yeah, the two does go by. Taking an extra close look at it. You don't want to take this shot for granted by no means. Those are all Gilbert's, Marge. And he actually ran into the seven ball. And that That's a little two. bit of an unforced error there. He got a little bit full. Jumped up a little bit there. Uh, raffle, raffle. 1,100.
No, Sam has made kind of a careless shot there on the two ball. He spun out two rails and the inside English and put himself in a bit of a bind there. They both coming about they both had an unforced error each this game. Like I said, telling all you guys out there that's watching and stuff, uh, people don't really realize how important these first games are, too. I was glad to get my first match under the belt. and I've got a pretty uh, tough one coming up. It's good to take a little break, get in the booth, though. And... Yeah, it's tough to play match after match after match. It is. But on Sunday, you always got to do it, so you've got to be able to. You, be you know prepared. it's coming, one way or the other, winner's side or one loss side. Now, Brian can see this ball. I don't believe he can make it, uh, not in the side or corner. Can't tell if he can hit this ball full. If he can hit this ball full, it's a little bit tricky. It won't bank cross corner. Another I believe you're about forced to kick at this ball. You like going up to the end rail and back out, try to kick it in the side? Well, the four is a little bit tricky there. I mean, you can hold it and kick at it like that. Pretty tricky situation he's in right here. Seven and eight's laying funny, though. Very funny. Uh, they're, they're not wired by no means. What did he elect to do there? Just cross he back hit it? That or did ball. he shoot? Yeah, I he think he tried to play it around ball. the four, three rails. He caught it full, and it hit the four, and... Now Sam's got a nice opportunity at the table. Uh, he's going to manipulate something with the uh, seven and eight ball. I think if he falls just right on the six, I can't tell if the seven will go. I mean, the combo will go. But if not, you can just get about where the five's at and pop the seven in cross side. And there you go, thinking that bank pool prospect again. <laughs> I think he might fall at the angle here to where he can go into the eight ball in that uh, after he pockets the five. Oh, he broke the balls out there. What a fantastic shot by Sam. That was Monday. a good shot. If you get a chance to clear him, go ahead and do it. That eliminated a lot of his problem. There's a couple of options here. Just up, up and, and back, and let's go one rail straight up, straight back. Nice shot there. It's a little more angle than what he would like. A little, Won't little be. lucky being left-handed here. He'll go around the table here, three rails. Watch out. Watch out. Ooh. He, uh, he escaped there. Uh, Sam must be living right this close to Christmas. Well, he's testing himself for sure. Yes, he is. Looks like with all this rain and everything, I'm starting to see the tables start to boing a little bit. They are. Uh, they are a little bit faster than what they were uh, last night. Well, the pool room is packed full of people. That's body heat, and you got all the humidity from outside, so. Nice yeah, shot, shot there good. by That's Sam. Definitely not an easy shot there either. And he took what the table was going to give him there. It's uh, difficult with the bridge to stop that ball up in the center of the table. And now just you just got to make ball, the ball. Roll the ball on the side, nothing cute. Yeah, he is Sam not knows happy. that could be costly also. He is not happy with himself after that shot.
That's a nice shot by nice Brian. Nice little poke by Brian. Take the lead in the match, uh, two games to one. Maybe uh, Sam Monday's break. Two to one, favor of Brian White. These two have had uh, many battles in uh, your tournaments over the past year, I've noticed. They played at uh, Kylie's, I believe. Uh, they played each other in uh, Inman. I believe they played each other in another tournament. Oh, Brian and Sam, they've played several times this year. And these are just the ones that I've been at. Yeah, uh, they've been played several times. Uh, These are two guys that play a real similar style. I would think um, I think Brian plays a little more safe. Brian's a little bit more of a grinder, where Sam will shoot a little more. Yes, he will. But uh, I mean, they play. Uh, I like both of their styles. I really do. He's going to play safe on this ball here. Kind of shot a two-way shot. He shot to make it, but if he misses, it comes back in the middle of the end rail. Got a little unlucky, I believe. The one may go straight in. Mm, no, I don't guess it will either. You can give it at least about an hour if you set up. Really need to use an overnight epoxy. It's set right now, but you give it a little while longer. had uh, Dave Buckholz from D&D uh, Q Repair and yeah, just uh, brought me my uh, brake cue back. I actually shattered the ferrule on it uh, in my last match. Uh, does uh, wonderful work. Uh, put a few tips on for me. Uh, actually put a tip on for uh, Sam a couple days ago. So those of you that are in the uh, Raleigh, Durham, in that area, I think you can get a hold of uh, Dave. Uh, does wonderful work. Doing all the key repair here for the tournament this week. Sort of made an unforced error there. He made a good hit on the one, but scratched. He lost a lost skew ball. See how Sam elects to go about getting on the two ball here. Not quite sure what he was doing there, Shannon. He uh, ran right into the eight ball there, but he still had uh, shape on the ball. Unless he has a blemish or something here, there shouldn't really be any reason he don't get out here. Everything's, you know, you just bounce off the rail a little bit for the five. Playing two good players, you get shots like this, you must get out. If you're going to, if you're going to win, you must get out when this opportunities like this come. I don't particularly care for the way he played that shot. That table's boing, and I, at table, it's really starting to boing. 
Yeah, I think I would have come down and shot the ball on the side, but he's all right. Two different styles, you know, their play is a little bit, a little bit tougher shot. Don't even really phase Sam. He'll go ahead and shoot at where Brian tries to play more pinpoint, more accurate position. Brian plays a little bit of like Buddy Hall style pool. Yeah, take with the table gives you uh, nothing too fancy, nothing too cute. He just gets out. Just, absolutely. And Sam just gets out too. He just does it, you know, like I said, he's, he's not trying to be as dead accurate as Brian is. Which is, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just two different styles of play. Kind of like Buddy and Earl in the day. You know, Earl just, he didn't care where the cue ball really got. Anyway, just made it wherever it landed at. Or Buddy, it was always in this four inch circle. <laughs> and our match is going to be knotted up in two games apiece. Got a lot of great players here this weekend, Shannon. Uh, a lot of great players. Got about all the cream in the crop in North Carolina. I think the only one that's missing really is Keith you got Bennett it. and Tony Watson. Tony don't hardly ever play in them, but uh, Keith Bennett and Jeff Abernathy. I'm kind of a bit surprised Jeff's not here. Uh, Jeff actually uh, sent me a thing on Facebook saying he had some uh, family uh, family affairs a lot of that he was going to go do. Christmas stuff to do, you know, this yeah, time of year. It's coming close, you know. He really wanted to make it. In that particular situation, family does come first. Nothing wrong with that. What's up with your website, Shane? Tell people about your website. All they got to do is log on, greatsouthernbilliardtour.com. They'll be able to see our whole schedule coming out. They can buy the T-shirts online now. Got several things going on online and um, be updated all the time. I think you guys are doing a lot of the updates and everything for us, so she's always up to speed. Uh, already got some... Uh, Tournament scheduled out there for 2011. You guys will see it January, February, and March. I think it's already booked up. But uh, we'll be having you guys uh, plenty of stuff to play in next year. That's music to my ears is all Just I can Check say. it out when you get a chance. Remember, GreatSouthernBillardTour.com. First event of the year will be uh, January the 8th and 9th at in, in at Classic Billiards in Conyers, Georgia. Be an event just like this, 1500 added, and then the weekend after that, I think is the uh, 16th and 17th at uh, Fast Eddie's in Goldsboro, North Carolina, and then I think 90% of the pool world will be at the Derby. I have yet to be at an event in, uh, at Conyers, at Classic Billiards. Uh, good one to go up there and check out that real tight diamond that everybody It's uh, a great talks room. About. They got all brand new diamond smart tables. Uh, they got eight bar tables, uh, eight diamond smart tables. It's bar table size and eight four and a half by nine. So they got the whole package. Speaking of great rooms, what about the room we're in right now? And Jimmy's Jimmy's got a masterpiece here. An absolute masterpiece. And every time we're here, we always have a good crowd too, because Jimmy and them just, they just go out of their way to make you, you know, feel like their your business is important to them, and just any way, anything they can do for you, they'll be sure glad to. Quite a nice uh, collection of uh, fine collectibles. Uh, Jimmy has uh, a lot of. Uh, Antique cars, uh, has a bunch of older pool cues. It's a nice place to check out, even if you don't play pool, that's for sure. Yeah, this is honestly a place that someone could bring their family just for the children to look at the cars and stuff. Because Jimmy's never met a stranger. No, he has not. No. First time I was here was uh, back in August, and... <laughs> And, you know, he remembered you instantly. I talked to him on the phone. Uh, they said, oh, yeah, Dave King, he was at one of our very first tournaments. And it's just like he'd known you 15 years. And that's, right. just, that's the way Jimmy is with everybody. It really feels good to be, uh, be treated like that as well. I'll guarantee you, out of all these people, there's how many people. In the, at one time, there had to be, what, close to 100 people in here today. I'd say by the end of the evening, there's probably 
there won't be two people in here that he's not spoke to, and that'll only be because it, maybe he just got crosswired or they left too soon. Jimmy's going to make sure he goes around and talks and speaks to everyone, and Jenny's the same way. This is. There it is. I mean, I don't even know how to describe them. They're just wonderful people. That's a nice shot by Brian there. Uh, he was a little straight in on the eight ball. He drew it back uh, one rail and back out. You can see, if you'll watch these great players like this, I mean, if you just – look at the demeanor of a top player even in between games during the game watch your facial expressions you can see the want to win in these guys it ain't just getting up there slapping them around you know no. hoping you get out this that, and another i mean these guys are here this is business they're here for business it's just, i mean you know pool is a recreational game but believe me this right here is not recreation pool not at all I mean, here's two guys as two great friends. They've been, we've all grew up playing against each other our whole lives, but right now they're doing a battle. They're at war right this minute. Now when it's over with tonight, I can definitely see these two having a beer going out together. We've all done it many a time. Yes, we have. But right this second, there is no friendship there. No. Friendship is uh, waiting out in the parking lot right now. And I don't mean that in a bad way either. I'm not, not at saying all. that either one of them is going to try to shark the other one. I mean, you can look at Brian's demeanor when he's sitting there in a chair like a perfect gentleman. Sam misses. He'll go do the same identical thing. And this is the way that pool should be. I wish that the audience and the general public and uh, amateurs, just everybody alike, could really look down inside and see what I'm trying to explain here is that pool is a sport. It is. I mean, just like poker became a sport. Uh, I'm sure 20 years ago, you would never thought poker would be uh, one of the uh, top programs on ESPN. It'd be really nice to... Uh, well, I have a lot of mixed emotions about that. Poker does pay a lot of money, and it is big, but to, honestly and truly, I don't think it... Well, I don't see how anyone can say it takes near the talent to be uh, great at that as it does this. No. The only game that's comparable to this, in my opinion now, everybody's got their own opinion, but I've compared it to a lot of smart people, I think is golf. Absolutely. I have a uh, personal preference on that myself. And they're so. both, one of the games is harder than, they've both got parts of the game that makes each one of them harder than the other one, if that makes any sense. Like golf, I mean, you know, you're playing, you're, you don't have an opponent. If you Not hit it behind all. a tree, that tree ain't going to run out and get in front of your ball. Nope. You've got to hit it there. Whereas here, sometimes you can't control your own destiny. you got a guy that's going to be trying to play, put you behind that tree. And now you got to try to figure out a way to saw it down. You have hit the nail directly on the head there, Shannon. Uh I'm not a great golfer by no means. I'm a bogey golfer like I have been for 15 years, but I still know what's going on. I've played enough of it to know, you know, that that they got a lot of likeness to them. There's so many similarities, it's unreal, especially in the mental aspect. Oh yeah, you got to be mentally sharp to be. Well, I think in any sport to be to do it at a world class level, you've got to be mentally strong. You don't see many world champions at anything. I don't care if it's mumbly peg. That's not, uh, you know, that's not given 100%, not focused. You know, one thing you had mentioned earlier, at this tournament, uh, there is no jump cues allowed. Now, this would be a shot right here where the jump cue would probably come well, into effect. You could full jump. You could jump that with your whole cue, too. I, myself, I am a fan of the no jump cues. Jimmy strictly does it because, you know, he's got uh, 14 tables here with 860 Simonis on it. And really all he's trying to do is protect himself. You know, guy, everybody knows all the room owners and everybody knows, you know, it's not cheap to have 14 tables recovered. No, it's not, 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 a, not at $400 a table no, with 200 for the cloth and 200 to have it done. And you can that see how good a carrot Jimmy takes of his place here. I mean, it's just perfect. I wish the viewers at uh, home right now could actually see the establishment that we're in. They would understand a little more what exactly we're talking about. It's one of the neatest pool collections that I've ever seen in all my life as far as going different places and uh, all the nostalgic stuff, you know, the older stuff that that's around here. If you've noticed too, David, a lot of people don't catch this. There's not one piece of neon in this whole building. No, there is not. And I think that's extra classy myself. Unlike Michael's, you know, places in Cincinnati where I come from. Well, any from, place. Not, a, every place you go in, every place you go has got neon. 
I honestly think uh, Neon is that, excuse me, just something else to shark you. <laughs> something else to keep your eye I don't on. I really look at it like this. I just think this has got a different look of classiness. Wow, that's an uncharacteristic lack of Sam there. Uh, I tell you what, I mean, they've both made a couple of good outs, but they've also been some very uh, uncharacteristic like uh, errors from both players. I think Brian's been a little more solid though right now up to this point. Sam's had two or three unforced errors. And I'll tell you what, you give this B White two or three errors and uh, you'll end up over on the one loss side. Yes, you will, most definitely. This cat here knows how to win now, it's that simple. And they both do. I mean, like I said though, uh, as far as the player, I've not really said nothing about it. And I was kind of trying to keep it a little quiet, but uh, Sam Mundy will be player of the year on the 2010 for the tour. Uh, we don't keep any weekly to weekly stats, but like I said, we've run 35 events and I just went back through it and looked. Sam does have the best record, the highest finishes and the most wins per tournaments played than anyone. But uh, I didn't really want to tell Sam that today in the middle of the of his match, and especially going into this, you know, and have something else, else on his mind. But I am going to award him uh, player of the year. And he uh, definitely deserves it. Definitely deserves it. And Sam's a perfect gentleman, too. You know what I'm saying? He's made three or four unforced errors, but he's sitting over there at the table. You see, he can't be mad at nobody but himself, and that's what you got to realize playing this pool. But these guys that throw these tantrums and stuff like that. It's no good. I kind of like to see them do it because I know if they're too busy throwing temper tantrums that they're not going to be worried about the next game. They're still going to be in their mind when they go to the table next time. you got to be able to leave all that shit behind you. You can't change something that's already happened. I can't see the score. Is it three to one, three to two? Three, two, Brian, is that correct? And they're exchanging games right now. But it is three, two, Brian, correct? Yes. And for those of you just joining us out there, uh, we are at Speakeasy Billiard Club uh, in Sanford, North Carolina. Final stop for, for the season on the Great Southern Billiard Tour, hosted by Shannon Dalton. Uh, he's actually in the booth with me right now. I'm David King, Raleigh, North Carolina now, uh, formerly of Cincinnati, Ohio. We're doing a match between uh, Brian White and Sam Monday. I'll tell you what, you just mentioned something about Cincinnati. I got a lot of friends and stuff from Cincinnati, but it would be hard to say uh, there's another great guy in the pool world, Mike Medley. Man, he, he, you're talking about a guy that really, really, really likes pool. He, there's another guy that's good for pool. I will have to say that about Michael. Formerly a good player as well. He used to be a, a great player. I played a, Michael a whole lot of even bank pool in my life growing up. I'll tell you what. How'd you like it? 100, 200 a game. He was hard to beat. I think I come out ahead over the years, but I did. I have been to Cincinnati and got beaten when I was a kid too. He was a good player. Still don't play bad. No, I mean, he, he just don't play. Nice. He don't play as good as he used to did. But now, I mean, look who he grew up playing against. You're talking about Donnie him, Anderson, like Joey Spade, Joey Gary Spade, Spade oh. Donnie Anderson, Cincinnati Clem, all of those guys. Man, John Brumback. I mean, you know, to say the least. Uh, those just, two used to play on a regular basis. The, we just named about five of the greatest bank pool players of all times there. Yes, sir. A lot of people, especially the younger players, may not be that familiar with Gary Spaeth. And uh, In my opinion, he... man, what a talent. <laughs> Unbelievable, what a talent. Other than uh, lost yourself. at a very, very young age. Uh, hepatitis, I believe, is what he lost. Hepati uh, hepatitis and leukemia. Yeah. Uh, 46 Very sad. years old. Gary went fast. Hell of a guy, Spud was. Spud. Other than you, uh, he was the only other person I really ever watched uh, play the game of banks uh, on a regular basis when I was, uh, you know, fairly young person. Uh, still fairly young, but <laughs> not, as, not as I used to be. Well. Sam has made another error there. He. I don't really want to say this, but I'm going to tell you, like I keep saying it, he keeps making mistakes like this, boys. It's, uh, he's going to have a long afternoon. He's going to be over on the left side of the chart.
Uh, he knows what type of fun that is over there. It's a long ways to go, second round, I can tell you that, with a 60-player field. Just uh, bouncing out one rail there. Like I said, you can tell by the way Brian handles his cue ball and stuff. He's a very uh, pinpoint player. He uh, likes to be in 100% control at all times. He always tries to stay on the right side of the ball. If you're looking for fanciness, you will not get it from Brian. But if you're looking for simplicity, where the game is made look easy, He's you all will about get it. that. <laughs> He is all about it. I think me and Brian's going to try to do a little practicing together. He and his girlfriend, Amanda, just bought a, a new home in, in Greenville there where we all live, where we're all from. And uh, he put him up a gold crown three in his new house, and he's very tickled of it. I told him I was going to come over and let him give me the seven. We was going to play some races to 11 for dinner and around the golf. <laughs> You've eaten a lot of food and playing a lot of golf. Hey, we've practiced together before, too. I'm telling you right now, this guy practices hard, too. He does not want to lose. Brian White does not. He does not like it. And nothing. We play golf together. Me and Brian do a lot of stuff together. I've had a few battles with him myself uh, in a few tournaments. Uh, I can honestly say I... Do not have, I do not have a victory uh, over him yet. The error he just made right there is very uncharacteristic, but I'm going to blame that again. I, well, I'm not going to I'm not just going to blame it all on that, but I'll like, we'll say it again. All these people, it's a little warm in here because it's so cold outside and it's raining. The rails are starting to play short. They're playing bouncy and short. But that's nobody's fault. That's not nothing wrong with the equipment or anything like that. No, it's something it's that should not be controlled. All you players know, that's something that the players just know about. I expect him, this is a one pocket shot. I expect him to execute this, and he did perfectly. Brian's really good at stuff like that, guys. Boy, his one pocket game has come a long ways in the last two or three years. I think it's come a It little may be bit his longer, best game now. I believe it probably is. Uh, I'll tell you right now, it takes, it takes a pretty well a top player to beat Brian playing one pocket. I uh, played him at the uh, Carolina Open uh, in the one pocket division. Uh, Give me a tough way to go. Well, Sam, Sam done about all he could do. He come in behind at the third rail. He did it just like you can do. But you know when you're kicking with two balls like it on the table, and especially when you're kicking out into space like that, uh, you keep you know you just gotta really hope for the best. And yeah, luck really does. He done all he could do there. there. Really. A little bit of an angle, but I don't believe B will have much problem with this one. I like shooting this with just a hint of high ball, high center. He'll hit it with probably center ball. Just a little punch. Like I said, there won't be nothing fancy. I can tell you that. Just ho hum, just poke another one in. B white. That's all I call him is B. B white. I kind of like the old thumper nickname that he had. <laughs> and our score now is going to be four games to two in favor of uh, Brian White. And Sam is going to be breaking. For all you viewers out there again, Thank everybody for their support that we've had all year long from all the room owners, all the players, and even you guys that's out there right now sitting at home, uh, you know, maybe sitting at home eating a steak dinner or watching this. It just takes the whole package to make all of this work, and we really do appreciate everyone's support. Alvin, especially you two, you've been, thank you for being on board. You've been a whole lot of help to us, a lot of hard work. I see you standing up there on the top of the table about to fall down, putting up all the lighting and everything. And you know, it's not easy work. 
Well, thanks a lot, Shannon. Well, you're one of my favorite players of all time, so this is a, a big honor to be here to be well, able I to be with you. Well, I want to let you know that it don't you, go unforgotten. You. We really appreciate everything you do. That means a lot, Shannon. Thank you, man. I can't wait to do more events with you. This is this is really fun. You do you have a great production. I believe we have got a good little thing going here. It really looks good, and honestly and truly, for you know, Marge has always done our streams and stuff like that, and does a great job for sure. That's where it all we all got it all started from. But it really makes it easier on her too. You know, like you know, if if she was doing the stream, I would have to be running the chart, so I couldn't even come over here and do this. Absolutely. So it really just helps out all the way around. That's great. You know, we, we you know, you got to thank the man right behind you, Jr. Calvert. Oh, he, Jr.'s been wonderful. Me and Jr.'s worked together. You know, my, again, I guess I've been out here long enough now. I remember Jr. A lot of people don't know how good Jr. Calvert played pool. Don't worry Very about good. it. He was a touring professional for many years and could play. Left-handed player, Jr. Played good. Very accomplished player. You are correct there. And Shannon. I'm sure he's got to miss it some. There's no doubt. He's around pool and stuff all the time. I know Jr.'s got to miss it some. But well, he's having definitely having fun doing this, and uh, you know, I wouldn't be here without him. And uh, he, j I'm the artist. He gives me the tools, you know. And he gives you good equipment to work with. Absolutely, too. and uh, and we're a great team together too. He does. He sets all the computer stuff up, and he's he's on that end, and I do the set. And here we are. I say one thing: Jr. is an amazing person on these computers. Absolutely. He really is on everything. Yeah, on everything, everything he, he does. does. I mean, I know he's doing. A lot of people don't know about Jr. That he also, for any room owners that might be on there listening, he's got all kinds of different software programs and everything to manage your whole bar. I mean, he's got it down. Even certain ones is so high tech that you can hit a button in your main office and it can tell you how many hamburgers you have left in your kitchen. I've discussed stuff like this with JR because in time I am going to do another room. Oh, yeah, you're going to do another room? Oh, yeah, I'm definitely going to do another room awesome. for sure. Awesome. Uh, I d not really think right now with this right. economy is the correct time to pull the right, trigger. Right, right. And, uh, you know, we're so busy with this tour, you know. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Uh, we've got a lot of work, a lot of hard man hours in it, Marge and I both do. And uh, I'm sure never going to let this go. But at the same time, I, you know, I'd like to have a room also. But I know when you when you have a room, you can just tack you on another 70 hours a week. Well, if anybody can do it, you can, man. So sometimes I kind of believe in the cloning. I think there ought to be about three of me. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, the room you had in Somerset for a while that was it was you know it was similar to this room, kind of. It was a player's room, just strictly yes, a player's was. room. I would have kept that room if they would have let us have alcohol in Somerset like we were promised. Oh, but that's neither here nor there. Everybody's life has a purpose, and my purpose apparently was not to stay in Somerset. I'll tell you what, the time I spent there was a great time. That's all it's I can say It's a good little town, that. good little town. Had a lot of fun in the nightclub scene, I know that. This looks like a pretty easy cleanup right here, guys. I don't see uh, I don't see Brian making many mistakes from here. No, it made, it made a great break. Uh, came up. Huh? I'm sorry, our score is six to two. Oh, the score is six to two, guys. I'm sorry, we were That's all, my fault. all a little off right there. I don't really know how we got that bad off. I mean, we're all sitting there watching it, but. It was story time. We were having story time. Maybe we was. <laughs> but I've been sitting right here watching every game. I don't really understand. I don't either. I thought I was. What it's they my call fault. That? I think I got what they call old timers. <laughs> it's definitely my fault. I think, he, like, did he snap the nine or something? Or did he no. do a combo in the nine? No. We, like, missed a whole rack in about five seconds there. It's my fault. I take full responsibility. is just taking control now. You guys remember I said about those early games, and now see it's real big. Where it's real big at with these two players now is when you get behind four or five games, even three games, you can't win but one game back at a time in my format because it's alternate to break. And I think that's one big thing that the amateurs really like about that is they feel like if they're playing Sam or they're playing Brian, 
you know, they're not going to get dominated. They're going to get some chances. And our score right now is seven games to two in favor of Brian White. Um, Sam's going to need to get to work. Uh, pocket the eight ball on the break. Uh, has a shot on the one ball here. Uh, come around two rails for the two ball. We did just pick up a new room a couple of days ago that I'm very happy to get in in Bristol, Tennessee. And I think everybody will know this name, Janet at Wells Pool Room, uh, Borderline Billiards. It'd be a, it's a very nice room in Bristol, Tennessee, in case any of you guys ever get through there and get a chance to play. Janet's got a great room there upstairs and downstairs. And it that truly deserves its name because the street in front of it separates the two states, Virginia and Tennessee. That's why she called it borderline, but Janet's a great person. We had a nice little talk the other night for about an hour on the phone, talking to her about the women's pro tour and her game and my game and just that and the other. And, uh, you know, Janet's a true veteran and a sweet, sweet person. We're so happy that uh, she wanted to have us there as a, uh, to put on an event. I told her we would try to make her proud. So you guys, if you get a chance, whether we're there or not, stop by and see Janet Atwell there. Again, that's Borderline Billiards in Bristol, Tennessee. I'm going to have to go check that room out, Shannon. Oh, uh, it's extremely nice. Just want to let everybody know we uh, have a new website, InsidePool.tv. You can send around to all your friends, InsidePool.tv. It's where all our videos are. And, and uh, look for a lot more on that, that station, too. So here we are. We're at the Great Southern Billiard Tour at Speakeasy's Nine Ball Tournament, Amateur Nine Ball Tournament. It's, uh, we're listening to Shannon Dalton, David King, and myself uh, do some commentary. And uh, we're watching Brian White. And Sam Monday, it's 3-7 to seven in favor of Brian White. Then here we come back now to where, see, when you, get in it, when you dig yourself a hole, you're fighting a deficit now where... Really, you're, you know, you're not in control of your destiny here. Once you get behind like that, if the guy breaks and holds his serve, you know, you're just uh, you're, you're, in, you're in for trouble. Brian has pocketed another ball. Ooh, that was a nice, friendly little kiss right there. Ooh, and another one. Double smoochy. Sweet kisses. Sweet kisses. <laughs> called the jelly roll. So what you guys think about our uh, Christmas dinner today? It was a excellent. quick change up real fast. It was I'll tell excellent. you what, we came in here this morning, Shannon was sitting outside and almost snowing on him, cooking turkey. I mean, I'm talking early. Everybody was just cracking their eyes open, looking across the parking lot. There he is. He's got his camo boots on, the camo shirt. He's out there, man. He's got that turkey cookie. This oh yeah, in baby. Sleet sitting out cooking by myself. Yep. After a long night last night too, we were all uh, here late. We was here late. Yeah, we stayed um, because you know the one pocket tournament got interesting there at the end. Yeah, and then everybody was just having a great time. Nobody wanted to leave, so there's Shannon. So outside. we did until about 4:30. <laughs> he peeled his eyes open this morning and came outside. We had a full turkey uh, Christmas dinner, courtesy of Shannon and the Great Southern Billiard Tour to thank all the players. It was for all the players and everybody that was involved, and we just uh, we had a feast, and it was uh, great. I haven't ate that good in a long time. Jimmy Bullis was a big part of that also. You know, uh, yep. Jimmy brought in those uh, 30 pounds of uh, honey-baked hams, and oh, I fried the three turkeys. Sure did. And Marge and Jenny, if everybody said, well, where was they at all day? They was upstairs cooking. That's where all the macaroni and cheese yep. and all the desserts and all of that come from. Yep, you guys uh, really did a pet good pat on the back for everybody out there, so we all appreciate that. 
but we was very much honored to do it. It's just our way of just showing a little appreciation back to all of our players and everything. And I called several people and told them, uh, like Larry Falk, you know, Larry just have had shoulder surgery about six or eight weeks ago from where he and Terry was in a real, real bad motorcycle wreck last year. Almost lost their lives. And I simply called Larry. I didn't even know he was back playing pool yet and just called him and tried to get him to come over and just have dinner with us, if nothing else, because boy, they're, they're two great people and we're blessed to have them back. Uh, they was very, very close to not being with us. Well, that's your style, Shannon. That's why everybody uh, cares about you guys so much and comes out here and supports your tour. And I, I don't see it getting anything but bigger. So keep up the good work, man. And uh, you know, you really just giving to yourself. When you give and you're giving to yourself, you know. And meanwhile, uh, Brian White looks like he is going to be Wizzle. Clear up the nine ball here and go ahead in this uh, game or match, uh, eight games to three. He be white. It's a nice shot on the Brian's nine. taking dead aim at him. He smells blood. I'm my Sam's racking the balls. I want to take this little opportunity to uh, say hi to my uh, seven-year-old son, Dakota. Uh, he's uh, back in Ohio. Uh, he's actually watching right now. I uh, hope he's enjoying the uh, commentary and the, the action, learning a little bit about pool. Hey, Dakota. <laughs> and, of course, my mom, who is in uh, Liberty, Indiana right now, she quite possibly is on there with us as well. In that part of the country, they might not be able to leave the house. I talked to John yeah. Brumback last night, and they had eight inches of snow. I talked to Mom Brutal. this morning. There is five uh, where she's at. So. I live about 100 feet from Lake Erie in Cleveland, so. Oh, my goodness. It's about 50-mile-an-hour winds coming off that lake. Brr. Oh, yeah, I'm holding on to a heater. I think I'll stick with the Carolinas right now. Yep. You uh, you so picked the right spot, This Shannon. little 35, 38-degree weather is not all that bad no, if you look at different parts of the country. Oh, yeah, this is summertime to me. I've been dreaming about 35 degrees for about two weeks now, so it's nice I to be here. day before yesterday, uh, yeah, the day before yesterday, I was speaking with Andy Gilbert, and I asked Andy how he's been doing. You know, he's, in my opinion, maybe the greatest cue maker on the planet. Built Definitely. you a beautiful shoe. He made you a masterpiece, didn't he? Amazing cue uh, he made you there. Just can't say so much good stuff about Andy and his wife. They're just such great, great people. But I asked Andy, I said, how's things going out there? I didn't know that they just had had a blizzard hit them right in the face. He said, man, he said, I won't even go out to the shop. It's so cold. That's brutal action up in the north for sure. Looking forward to seeing Andy at the Derby. I just talked to him. He'll be coming up. So I think all of his cues may be pre-sold. But uh, if you nice. get a chance, I do know he's going to have a few extra pieces with him at the Derby. If you get a chance, guys, How do yourself a favor. Just try to find one and hit a few balls at the one. That's all I say. You don't have to try to sell his cues because if you just hit a couple of balls and pay attention to the detail and the craftsmanship in them, they will sell their sales. Obviously, if the guy's showing up and his whole set set's already sold, I <laughs> mean, how strong is that? He got there last year. He got there on Wednesday afternoon again. He got in about 5.30. I asked him at 6.30, I've uh, been there an hour and a half. I said, how many cues did you bring with me? He said, well, I brought a dozen, but they're gone. <laughs> They've been there an hour and a wow. half. Wow. Wow. You know, I think a great cue maker is uh, Davini. Pat Davini. Pat Davini is a good cue maker. There's a lot Amazing of good cue makers anymore, but then – you know, it's just like players. There's a lot of good players, yeah. but then you've also got that select elite group. Yeah. I mean, Nick I'm Warner, a... I was talking with Nick again yeah. the day before yesterday. I was talking to him about, you know, our loss and everything at the Moscone Cup because, right. you know, me and Nick Warner are just like family. Absolutely. And um, we was just talking about this. We talk about our families. We talk about the Moscone Cup and about this and the other. And he told me uh, he had went to a show – with another friend of ours, Phil Wendelman, owns Chattanooga Billiard Club in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And they went down to that uh, uh, American Cue Makers Association, that, the one they had in Florida at the- uh, Right, Miserac. Uh, uh, before the Miserac. Oh. It was the International Cue Collectors, the biggest oh. show of the year. And uh, Nick's got into where he's collecting cues now and stuff. And he told me 
I may go down there with him next year. He said it was unbelievable because, you know, I, I really, really like pretty cues. Yeah. Uh, they're a piece of art, and a lot of people Absolutely. don't even realize this. There's a lot of people, you know, people that's got money now that's uh, – Cues are a better investment by far than they are in the stock market or anything like that. If you'll stop and think about it, in the last hundred years, Q sticks has never had a decline since the Great Depression. Wow. And it, you would be hard pressed to name me any other commodity that has done that. Gold goes up and down. Quality Q sticks don't. No, absolutely. Now, you might not have such a high gain. You may only gain anywhere from three to six to eight percent per year, but your return is pretty well guaranteed. Yeah, I'm a big. Uh, I use Sean Q. That's my preferred Q for the center core that they do. You said Sean. Yeah, that's Great my Q. Great Q. I played with one for years. A production Q, but in yeah. my opinion, the best production Q made. I love Definitely. their core. They got that laminated core. Man, the, they hit so solid. Great I just, Q. They don't sponsor anybody, any players or any tournaments or anything. They don't give any kind of money. I was a player rep from Johnny and I were both a player rep for them for about 10 right. years. They don't do any advertising or do any kind of support. They don't have to. They, they yeah. sell their self. They put out a perfect product. I mean, I'm sitting here talking about them, so yeah and of course you guys neither one of you guys like what I play with so we're not even going to mention that oh I'm not saying I don't like predator cues predator I Q's like predators been, they've been one of the biggest names in the billiard industry now for 10 or 15 years but I it's like not the that old I don't predator. like them it's just that I don't know how to play with them I didn't grow up in that era if you look at guys your age Corey's age all of the all of the younger generation the generation mm. right below me Right. All you guys learn how to play with that. That's what so I learned it's how to play with. You guys feel weird picking up and playing with a regular shaft. Where if I pick up a Predator or a Tiger, or, you know, we're sponsored by Tiger. If I pick up any kind of cue like that, well, I hit the ball right in the face. I look like a, I look like a baboon up there trying to play. It's kind of how I feel when, uh, you know, yeah, I hit a couple I mean, balls I, with your. You know, uh, I'm not saying no. I'm not knocking any of the laminated shafts. Ob, you know, Ob one. There's so many good ones out there now. It's crazy, but. It's not the way, like, you right. don't see many of the older players. You don't see Buddy playing with one, no. Earl playing with one, Dennis nope. Hatch playing with one, Johnny playing with one, Farner playing with one. It's just all that is is, a, you know, different generation is all that is. I like the old Predator shaft with the cat on it, the first one. I think that hits a great, but other than that. I remember when Alan McCarty started Predator cues. I, I, you know, I broke with Predator for a long, long time. They're a major company and great for pool. They do a lot for pool. And they have their own tour as well. Uh, their own their prone pro tour. Yeah, they do a lot for pool. Karim and all them guys. Tough little shot here. Here's a tester. Yeah, that's too tough. That's kind of too straight in there. You know, I hate to really say I told you so, but you could almost just see the demeanor of this match. It's just kind of been headed over a hill. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Now, what was the name of, Alvin, what was the name of your all's new website, Inside Pool TV? InsidePool.tv. InsidePool.tv, InsidePoolMag.com. All kinds of good stuff going on. There is so much great stuff on that InsidePool.tv. Uh, uh, so many video archives. It is, it's amazing. Again we, again, we go back to the brilliance of JR, too. Uh, when JR does something, he don't do anything halfway. He does it first, first class. Anybody that opens up these magazines. Got that right. Looks, uh, you know, any other type of magazine in the country, whether it be fishing, hunting, no matter. I mean, uh, I read a lot of magazines and stuff like that. And the quality uh, and the pictures, the production, all of it, uh, you can tell what quality is. It's a great shot there. I just, yes, like, it was. The only thing you had to say is, is it too late? Again, I don't want to sound like I'm beating a dead horse, but if you remember, we was talking back about early about how important those early games is. Yep. And this was where it's showing here's up. Here's the reason I say that. If you just take two of those early mistakes, two, 
Now, that's, you don't just really take two. It looks like you do, but you don't. Because not only do you take two away from yours, you add two to his. So that's truly a four-game swing. That's where a lot of people have the misconception of that. I got gotcha. you. That makes sense. My dad used to tell me that anytime that you give one game away, you don't just give that game away. You lose one and he gains one. So your dad taught you how to play pool. My dad taught me basically everything I know about pool. A lot pool of people don't and, know your stories. And give me the he give me not only did he teach me, he gave me the opportunity to go play against the best players in the world. Oh, he did. You know, when I was 12 or 13 years old, uh, he was paying those two and three hundred dollar entry fees back then for me to go to compete against the best players in the world, and he knew I didn't have a chance. I mean, you couldn't have told me that. I thought I was going to beat them all <laughs> even then. Nice. But uh, it was just for the experience, and he seen the love and the desire. I mean, I was talented, you know, to be a young kid like that. Absolutely. But uh, you still have to be able to have that opportunity given to you, and I'm so thankful for what he and my mom done. Yeah. Uh, my mom, she's one of still is one of my biggest fans. She. Uh, She's in my house right now, actually watching Great take care of my, woman. my puppy dogs. Great nice. woman. Well, that's interesting. Treats me like I'm at home every time I'm at your house. And yeah. always will. So your influences were like Nick Varner, Buddy Hall. I grew up old school for sure. I mean, when I was uh, when I was younger, I'm from Somerset, Kentucky, and. Get you an update on the Earl score and here. Buddy the Hall were actually living in Richmond, Kentucky, which is 58 miles from Somerset. Nice. And I got pretty fortunate enough to go over there, and them guys would practice with me a little bit and stuff. And then, like I said, a few big tournaments of the year, just try to get out and go play in them when I could get away from school. Yeah, just to mention something across the room, uh, Ryan Stone, a uh, great player from uh, – Dayton, South, Ohio. Dayton, Ohio. That, uh, played at one of the pool rooms uh, that I played out of for a little while. Uh, he's actually got his hands full in a match right now with uh, Chris Turner. Oh, Chris is a good little player. I want to call him. Uh, every time you see him, you see BJ or vice versa. I mean, it's Katie. I, will, I don't want to. I don't mean this being bad at all, but he's almost like a protege of BJ. If you'll well, watch BJ's him play, a great his, de player. his demeanor and everything. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with having a good role model like that. Chris is actually on the hill right now. Chris is a good player. I can't see what the score is from here. The score is like eight, eight games seven? to eight. Eight, eight? And Ryan has to go to 11. Now, it was eight games to six there a minute ago uh, in Who's favor on of the Chris. Hill? Is, uh, Chris. Chris is on, on the, the hill. hill. Uh, Ryan Stone's a very good player. He's a double-A player. Ryan is a great player, and he's also going to get a good education behind him, too. National you know, I Guard. I talk to him, and he don't uh, – he uh, don't get the time to devote a lot to pool, but he's also looking at the big picture. Guys, not only this match, we're going to have a lot of good matches coming up for you all here in the next two days. Got a nice, strong field here the week before Christmas. And uh, if you guys like to watch some good pool, we're going to have it for you. It will definitely be here. It's great great being in the booth. Uh, so I get to see a lot of good stuff. Absolutely. So post this link on your Facebook, everybody, and uh, you get on your social media stuff and uh, let everybody know we're doing this stream. And uh, you'll get to hear player, great players like Shannon do commentary and uh, Dave King and other great players that are here. Brian agreed to do some commentary and stuff, so you get to really see into the minds of some of these great players and hear what they would, what shots they would play. So tune in, InsidePool.tv and GreatSouthernBilliardTour.com. I'm also going to, like you said, I'm going to try to ask a few of the better players and stuff to give a few minutes and do a little, spend a little time in the booth. I don't think, I think Brian will be glad to do one. I'm sure Sam will do one. BJ will probably do one. And it's well, good for them, too. It gives them a little exposure, you know. You know, let's them sit down and talk to the public. They can talk about their sponsors. They can talk about whatever they want to talk about. And uh, you know these players a lot better than I do. I'm more of the Northeast um, America. You know, I know all the players. Oh, I know all the players up north. You know the players down here. So, you know, you talking to them about commentary, that helps. Well, you're getting to spend a little more time in the south now. Oh, yeah. Drive. It's pretty. I was telling JR on the way down here, when it's uh, – 
from Cleveland to Washington, D.C., when that doesn't seem like too bad of a drive, like that seems like you're just getting started. Oh, <laughs> <That's>, goodness. <laughs> you know you're on the road. We've been down here to the south like four times this year, five times driven down through Virginia and North Carolina. Virginia but mostly, but North Carolina twice now. Yeah, I'm surprised Michelin doesn't send me a uh, Christmas cards. <laughs> Just getting a nice little two fingers from Jimmy Bullis over here. Uh, he's the owner of this pool room. Uh, we were watching a match. Uh, giving us a couple other uh, signs as well. <laughs> you know, I see a Jimmy in the booth uh, for a little bit. Uh, Definitely try to do that. But well, we really appreciate Shannon doing the commentary. He's a hard one to get a hold of because he's running the whole tournament. But we appreciate he's him always, stepping he's in so here. Busy. He is. It's real hard to get him in the booth, but we and got him this time. So, us. yeah, absolutely. It's great to hear what he's would do and hear him talk and stuff. So I love to sit down and do it, but it's sometimes you know I don't want to make sure that I'm not taking nothing away from my own event. But absolutely. anytime I get a chance to sit down, I'll be glad to do one with you guys. Appreciate it. Yeah. We usually have it, guys, where we can intermingle with you all and see what you all are chatting, you know, have a little chat and stuff about it. But for some reason, I don't know if it's the weather or whatever it may be, but we're not getting a great signal in here. So we're just having to work with what we can work with. Yeah, at the uh, better signal rooms, we hit, we usually have that. So that'll be back. We'll get that. Kind of but all you pool room owners that are going to be doing these streams, remember, kick your Internet speeds up. You pool room owners out there, you know, you want to be in this and you want to do streaming, you got to have a good internet connection. So put that on your to-do list for next year. If you're going to be doing one of Shannon's events, look at getting your internet the fastest you can get it. And really, that's all you got to pay for. It's a lot of great advertisement for a very low expense. It really is. So you know what to do out there, pool room owners. You know, we were just discussing uh, tips on uh, brake cues. I just had some work done to my uh, Predator. I had a little accident with it. Uh, Shannon, what kind of tip do you use on your brake cue? Well, to be honest with you, I think Steve Lomax put it on there. I'm not really huge on that, but I really do like it. And, you know, I don't even know for sure that I'll say this correctly, but I believe the tip is a tip that Sam Sura makes, and uh, they're the only ones that make it. It's made by them patented by them and you cannot get it any other place it is leather but it honestly and truly jumps the ball better than phenolic really and it's made out of leather it's unbelievable i don't know how they do it what it's mixed with it is 100 percent legal and it is like hitting them with a bowling ball i tell you what uh, the tip i use on mine i use a, a white diamond i don't I particularly like the uh, predator tip that comes on the uh, bk2 I use a white diamond tip. It's a uh, cotton-based tip. Uh, very firm. Uh, the cue ball just feels like it explodes off the tip when you hit it. Uh, I've heard a lot about them. I'm a little unfamiliar with them, but I was just looking at yours. It's a good-looking tip. It does look good. has that sort of camel color to it. In a break tip, I'm really just looking for something that don't mushroom. I can't right. stand to feel a mushroom and that I've got good control with the cue ball with where I can feel the cue ball a little bit. And you know, it is fairly hot. I mean, like I personally don't think like an Elk Master would be a great break tip. Not at all, Too much, way too much spin. It's just too soft, it compresses too much. Well, Actually, Sam's making a little run. Yeah, Sam was back. He's at the bottom of the uh, the pit was dug. He's down there looking up out of the pit, and I think he's uh, clawing and scratching as hard as he can here to get out. What is our final tally? I can't see from over here. We are at uh, 10 to 4 now. 10 to 4? Yeah. Yep, the, uh, the procession has grounded about around. Not saying that anything's impossible. But there's Brian a, White's going to be all for to beat with a six-game lead playing alternate the break. There's a guy in here with a white collar on, and he's walking around with a black, black uh, cloak and a white collar, and uh, he's getting ready to do the last rites here. Preacher man. Uh oh. And that is going to do the set right there. Sam is scratched on the eight ball. Brian White wins the set, 11 games to four. Well, thanks everybody for joining us. Sorry. 
and thank uh, everybody out there as well. Uh, thanks, Shannon Dalton, for uh, joining me and Alvin in the booth. Yeah, thanks, Absolutely Shannon. Absolutely, my pleasure. Thanks we'll a lot, be back dude. some more. I'm going to try to do a little work. I believe March of some of her duties, but you guys stay tuned, man. A lot of good matches coming up. We only run about five minutes in between matches, so if you like pool, sit down, fix you up a big turkey sandwich, maybe get Absolutely. you a cold beer or a glass of ice water and spend the evening with us. We'd like to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and hope you guys love pool. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. Support Shannon's Great Southern Billiard Tour. Thank you. And uh, David King, pool I'm going to jump off thanks, now and get Dave. ready for my next match. Good I'll luck, be back buddy. with you shortly. All Thank right. you, Alvin. Yes, sir. Thanks. Okay, so we'll be back here in a few with another match. More videos, games, and downloads. Go to InsidePoolMag.com.
boots, but they're boots they might the boots all they want are already missing. Yeah. They keep you warm, don't they? Hell yeah.
Started here. Right. Run our intro. Go right after this. Great Southern Billiard Tour, Speakeasy Billiards. You're watching the Inside Pool production of the Great Southern Billiard Tour. We're here at Speakeasy Billiards in Sanford, North Carolina. We're watching Larry Falk and Mike Basha. Absolutely. They're two A players, both going to nine. I'm J.R. Calvert, with Inside Pool Magazine and Inside Pool TV. Joining us here in the booth is Alvin Nelson. Alvin, how you doing, sir? Pretty good, how are you, J.R.? Not bad. It's not been bad quite of an adventure getting down here and doing this, hasn't it? Oh, routine, always a story. Yep. Worth repeating at some point. Yep. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll let everybody clue in. We'll, we'll clue them into our adventures here shortly. But uh, it looks like Mike <laughs> Bosch is coming right out of the gate here. I, I don't see a problem with this out whatsoever. I think he's going to put the, he's going to draw first blood. I've been watching him shoot, uh, practicing and stuff, and uh, playing great so we'll see what happens here well, Michael, you know he's got a solid game a nice straight stroke pockets balls well knows the game I mean it's it's just a matter of experience that's gonna you know be the big change you know in his game one day uh, I, I, I truly see a year or two from now he'll be you know into that double a category he's got great fundamentals mechanics you know what I like about him uh, he, he figures stuff out you can definitely see that he's got the talent to play sure but does. one of the nice things about him is he's not stupid he has great problem-solving skills you gotta in a game like this that's that's key because it's uh, it's a very it's a mental game for sure well, I've watched, uh, you know, so many players just try and shoot themselves out of a mess, and that's the wrong way to attack a problem. And, uh, you know, I, I see easy outs for him to be nothing. Well, 